morning and welcome to this uh, week's Think Agronomy in a very cold and quite windy Timau. This is perfect conditions though for peas and in fact we're bulking a couple of new white varieties here under irrigation. So we've got them in early and we're hoping to turn them around as uh, quick as possible for the farm and um, yeah these are new white peas so hopefully they should be very very marketable. Um, there's definitely a yield advantage. We're on our third or fourth trial now with uh, against Blue Moon, the standard, and they are certainly uh, certainly showing a lot more yield potential. But importantly, very, very different growth habits. If I look at this row, that's 10 inch. And most of our peas are grown on about 15 inches here, which I'm a convert, by the way, on 15 inch rows. I think it's fantastic, um, allows the moisture seeking and um, certainly that principle of planting on, on the row and then shifting to a cleaner bit of ground. There's a huge amount of proven benefits of uh, doing that and uh, keeping rhizoctonia and take all at bay. But with peas, well, you've got these plants that are tiny little things that need to try and tendril. Having them on a wide row means that it takes much longer for them to bridge and cross the gap. Um, there's a lot of evidence that says peas need to form that structure, that sort of lattice, across the whole ground before they really shoot up and, uh, and get going with vigour. But um, And of course it does help. If you can plant on narrow rows, it inevitably helps with uh, weed competition and peas are not the most competitive crop. We've used a pre-emergence here, a three-way pre-em of uh, a bit of clomazone, linuron and sencor, which has done a very good job so far, but we'll have to come back with clethidim for some brome. It's a bit of water grass. I always play it safe with basagran in these conditions where it's extremely bright. Up at Mount Kenya especially, you get that very high light intensity. You don't want to be damaging these young plants. These look pretty healthy, but um, they've been dressed with apron star. Obviously you need to keep a very close eye out with peas for thrips and for cutworm, but uh, these look pretty good so far. Planted about two and a half inches. This was an Ndume planter, and it's done really, really quite well actually. But um, certainly the main things that we want to look at next year for our trials are going to be row spacing plant population and the French are on probably double the seed rates that we're on and they get some really good pea yields doesn't mean we should we've got to do the work and just verify it ourselves um, and then there's a bit more work on herbicides and uh, fungicides it, annoyingly though we never seem to quite get up to the yield potential even our four ton a hectare crops are not where the potential is for this crop and we know that with our barley and with some of our other crops, even our wheat and our canola, we're getting very, very good yields. So there's a big, big yield gap. I would say the biggest yield gap on the crops we grow is in peas. So that's where we've got to do the work.